in the Setegata, which should be fulfilled is the emphasis of the position of the body uh, when an attack comes. For that, it's needed that the power is from the hips upwards. The next movements are part of a sequence called Meigitsu, one of the first kata of Yoijutsu studied in our curriculum. This nuki or draw is called Omote Kaiten Gyaku Kesanuki. It consists in executing a kaiten movement and draw the sword, cutting diagonally upwards. The movement begins with a kaiten. Kaiten means rotation or turning. It's a very usual and important movement in Yaijutsu as in Aikijujutsu. The Kaiten movements in Yaijutsu can have two explanations. Or the swordsman was dealing with multiple opponents or he was dealing with someone using long weapons. Since this sequence is considered basic, it would not be about fighting with multiple opponents, but rather fighting in this case with a spearman. This explains the first step with the right leg before the Kaiten evading from an attack of a spearman. For this reason, be aware of this angle of evasion established with your back when you're practicing by yourself. Remember that your back should be kept always straight, regardless of the angle or posture described. When you step forward, you should be able to move quickly without interruptions and with balance. If you support your weight over your heel, your hips will move backwards and you will tend to stretch your legs. This will be reflected raising your center of mass and forcing your hips to be moved backwards and therefore causing your back to lean forward in order to keep the balance. However, your hips are turned outwards and when you lean your back, you'll distribute your weight diagonally with an axis out of the vertical axis. Under this condition, it is very difficult to complete your kaiten correctly. So, when you step forward, support your weight over your metatarsus without touching your right heel on the floor. This will inclinate your axis forward and bring your center of mass close to the right leg, that is the axis in turn of which you really rotate. Then, when you turn your hips, you'll be able to spin smooth and correctly. A characteristic of great importance in so dosa or the practice with enuke, is that in the middle of your kaiten, left shoulder pushes the yari, or spear, also, when we turn, we should restrain the spearman's movements by turning close to the spear. This would make it difficult for him to use the other extremity of the yari, often used for hitting. Then draw the sword and cut the enemy's forearm. In this case, there is no specificity regarding the part of the body that should be cut, but the interval from the elbow until the wrist. This happens because there are many yoroi or armors of the ancient warriors that do not have a strong protection under the arm. If I want to draw in any way, some points should be studied and considered. In this first posture preceding the draw, the symmetry of the body is unbalanced in postures and angles. It is different from the Shizen posture, that your arms are naturally relaxed in the sides of your body. You can see that as the right hand holds the tsuka, or the handle, the right hand gets overloaded and, as a reflection, your right shoulder is not as free as it would be in a Shizen posture. For this reason, it is very important to keep the shoulder relaxed. It gets young or contracts only in the moment of the draw. If it is already contracted, there is no flux and you will not be able to feel it or polarize it to a positive young condition if it is already in that state. 